Hey there, this is Kent, and I'm going to show you how I replace a leaky washing machine water supply valve. Right. First thing is to shut off the water supply to the house. It's out there next to the street. It happens to be right here. You can tell it's springtime in Palo Alto. Next, you open up the hose bibs. Let the water drain out. Good to open the low uh, hose bibs, which are low on the house, close to the ground. Now we go in the house. Knock, knock, hello, hello, maintenance. Maintenance, open the fixtures, listen to this. Can't really hear it, but the water's draining out. Open the fixture in the bathroom. This allows air to get in the system so water can drain out of the system. All right, here's that hose bib again. It just stopped dripping out once the fixtures were opened. It's important to do that inside a house, especially with an upstairs house, because there's a lot of water uh, up in those pipes. So it's good to open the, the valves so that all the water will just fall out and, and drain out. The washer and dryer happen to be in the basement. So I protected the brand new washer with a nice tarp. And here's the valve that's that's leaking around the stem. So we got a replacement valve for this. Here's a pretty good shot of what the valve looks like. Here's a good tip. I like to use this stuff. It's like a rust buster or any thread penetrant, something to use. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that right over here on these threads just to make it easier for this valve to come off. This really looks like it. I mean, this is a washing machine valve. It's lead free. Made in America. That's not bad, huh? Talk about it. So I think we're going to be in good shape if we loosen this up. Don't do this late in the day. Do it in the morning. The procedure is going to be to support right here with a wrench and then turn this counterclockwise and that will take this off. So you can see I got a little bucket here, so you can open the valve. This is the lowest place on the house. You know, the fixtures are open upstairs, so water can get in behind the, or air can get in behind the water and allow this to drip out. If I was sweating pipe back here, this would be more important, but I'm just screwing on a new valve, so it's not that important to drain all the water out. This will take just a minute. Oh wow, look at that, there we go. Last little bit, huh? So there we go, just about done. That took like maybe a minute and a half and this is like a th average three bedroom, one story house. This is just a little gallon container. So that's about all you need. Wow, look at these, these cherries and all these nice flowers, it's springtime. So it's not a bad idea to gonna use that water decent purpose okay I put the bucket down here there's a couple of drips so using a couple of decent adjustable wrenches get in there get some wrenches on there if at all possible it's nice to reach in and even let's just see if I can bust this loose don't you don't want to hurt the ah, a little bit ah, boy that's tight if you could get in what if we try it this way? Generally, you don't like to run an adjustable wrench like this, but uh, is the camera getting that? Well, good enough, right? If I could squeeze this, you get a hell of a lot. There we go, now it's moving. Without torquing the pipe, you don't want to bust the sweat joints on the copper. And so now we can grab Nice. Okay, I repositioned the wrenches now. We can grab and just squeeze and they rotate. There we go. That's the ticket. Take another bite. Always want to support the pipe. There we go. So, you know, this is the procedure now. Okay, that's that. I guess just quickly before we do anything else, just check. Make sure this is going to be the hot ticket here. 
going to work. Yeah, that's going to be just fine. So this needs to be cleaned up. So why not start with a wire brush here? Just get this, clean this crap out of here. Won't bore you with the details. Okay, after working a while with a little brass, I think it's a little brass bristle brush. Just use a rag to really clean up the threads. And then we'll wrap it with the little Teflon tape. There's one other thing I can say before you wrap it with Teflon tape. Just take the new valve. It's just starting to go on and just put it on and just sort of feel how how loose or tight the, th the, thread, the threads feel. It's starting to tighten up there. So that's pretty good. You know, if sometimes the threads are really tight and you, you can't put a lot of Teflon tape on or if they're really loose then you'll put like as much as four or five wraps on. But this is a decent fit. So I think just, you know, three or four wraps and since it screws on this way, you want to wrap the tape that way. So when you tear it, you know, uh, as you put this on, it will lay the tape down on itself and not pull it up, you know. It's wrapped. It looks about like that. And now just for a little affordable insurance program, I use something called pipe dope. Put a little pipe dope on the threads. Not not that kind of stuff. It's, uh, or I think, do I have it? Here we go. They call it Rector Seal. But plumbers refer to it as pipe dope. That's why people like to be plumbers. Plumbers. Okay, make sure to stir it up real good. And then you take your pipe thread sealant or your pipe dope and just put a little bit on the threads here. Like so. It's just plumber art. Clockwise it goes. I mean, technically I should take this other hose off, but ah, I don't care. Okay, now we use the wrenches again. Give the valve a turn, tighten it. You don't want to go too tight. I think it's going to go just one time around. This is starting to get pretty tight here. Okay, I'm going to kind of work on it. We can use the same procedure as we did taking it off to tighten it, where you get the wrenches in a situation where you can squeeze them. Because I'm really, you can put a lot of force on it this way. Right, and bring that up. Now it's really hard now because I'm no longer in that configuration, but we're just going to keep going. Okay, almost straight down. Oh, that's pretty good. You don't want to go crazy on it. I want it to be nice and plumb straight down. So it looks good. Just a hair more. Sometimes you can do that with the thumb and push up. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to shut off this valve. And it does feel nice. Brand new valve. Now outside to turn the water on. So the water is going to come back on. I've got the hose bibs open still. So when the water comes on, the air that's in the line could be pushed out through there. Right? Open it all the way too so that the valve seats up against its full opening. There we go. Turn this off. Okay, run over here. Okay. Get this one off. And now inside the house. The valves are open. All right, knock, knock. Hello, hello, maintenance. Put your clothes on. All right. And this last one. Okay. It's good to wipe any uh, extra, extra crap off of there. And I think I'll just use the bucket here to get some get some of the air out before it gets hooked up to the washing machine. Some air in the line, no doubt. Oh, 
Oh look, you know that's the hot water. Okay, I thought I was doing the cold supply. I see. That's why it was dripping the whole time. So uh, if it's the hot water, it's good to go to the water heater. <sighs> if you can see that this valve is in line that's open, what you do is just go that way. Turn it that way so it's perpendicular and that would shut the water off to the water heater. But, you know, you see we did it, it wasn't necessary. If you're a sweating pipe, you'd have to do that. Otherwise it just tends to drip a bit longer. So there's one other thing which I didn't mention in the beginning. So just about done now. Take a nice dry, clean rag, with the system pressurized and the valve off and you can use your finger to look for any moisture it would be leaking here check the valve the valve will be fine too but the other one was leaking at the stem that's why it was replaced that happens and uh let's get i guess one last thing just to check let's see if we can should see that 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 looks that looks nice and plumb and let's say if it was leaking here if it was leaking there it would be fine to turn this another quarter turn and just have the hose come in that way, you know, but I couldn't do another full turn, but another quarter turn and the hose would just come out like that. That'd be fine too. I would just leave this on for the homeowner. They see they got an American made lead free, nice hose bib. They could take that off. Oh yeah. Got to reconnect the machine. Make sure that that washer is in there. Normally hand tight's good, but you could use you could use a little bit of a wrench like this. Okay to use a channel lock to just give it, you know, not too tight, just a little tight. I can pressurize the machine. There we go. When you open these up, open them all the way. That's the way to go. I guess one last thing, check the new valve. Make sure the new valve's not leaking. Nice and dry. Guess we check everything again. And this is all hooked up. Everything's open. I've been wrenching around on it, so another check around here. That's perfect, you know. Let's see, is that, is that okay? I don't feel anything. That's nice and dry. This homeowner's got an eagle eye, too. She'll notice if this thing just sweats, she'll notice. As she should, as I should. I think we're going to call this done. This is Ben Kent with KJS Painting and Renovations. If you like what I'm doing, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you ever want any help with this sort of thing, you can look me up, give me a, uh, a phone call or an email. I operate out of Palo Alto. And uh, thanks for taking the time to watch the videos.